Peace and love for the cat people. I didn't think you left Warwick. I don't like to leave Warwick unless I have to. Bananas. <laughs> 75 yards from shore and come across a great white shark. 75 yards? He calls himself a Swifty. <laughs> Unbelievable. Every single day, went and got hot wieners my entire senior year. Oh, yeah. You're not even qualified to vote on this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what the people think. They're trying to sell the house. Ding, ding, ding. Win a win a chicken at mm. dinner. And welcome to episode 8 of Shooting the SHT, Real Banter with Nick and JT from the Slocum Home Team. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Tuesday, May 28th, we are fresh off of Memorial Day weekend. What's new with you, John? What's good? It's a good weekend, you know? Some family time, a couple of days at home, spent a lot of time on the patio, took another crack at potty training this weekend. Oh boy, tell yeah. us about that. It was good. It was better yeah. than the first time we had to stop. Um, decided to hold it for like three days, so we had to take a pause the first time. It's dangerous. But this was a this was a successful go of it. So good couple of days, some good progress. Got to keep moving, you know. Can't have two in diapers at the same time. So, are you breaking news on the podcast? Maybe. Wow, Johnny, what do we got? A uh, little tea expected December first. Oh, so. Whoa, yeah. let's go, my man. Let's yeah, go. baby. Let's do it. So. <laughs> yeah, John. Wow. I was out there. I was like, Nick's going to ask what's new. I was like, oh, I can tell him what's December new. December 1st, huh? Yeah. Uh, you know what if it's a boy or girl? Do you know yet? Is it too early? Not yet. We should know this okay. week. You're going to find out? Yeah. No surprise for the for the Tetros? No surprise. I heard that leads to extra painting. It, <laughs> I can tell you all about that. That's awesome, man. I'm so happy for you yeah, guys. Thank That's you. great. It's yeah. December 1st. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Very good news. So that was my weekend. How That's was yours? it. End of the podcast. 10 out of 10. Podcast. Yeah, for real. Yeah, rate that podcast. That's awesome. That's yeah. fantastic, John. That's exciting. Yeah, huh? excited. So uh, how far along is she on December 1st? Uh, Math was not my major. Uh, <laughs> Friday was her 12-week appointment. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, That's the mark. You got to wait for the 12-week mark. Yeah. Right? All right. I was making sure you weren't breaking news at like six weeks in or something <laughs> like that. <So>. Cut. <laughs> Cut this. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Congratulations. No, it's okay. It's Congrats, safe. John. That's awesome. Super Thank happy you. for you guys. That's fantastic. Well, I, I just feel like we just... We peaked. No, I, wa <laughs> I want to learn more about your weekend. Tell me about this pool. I got nothing compared to that. <laughs> you just put in a pool. Tell uh, me all I, about it. I am not expecting another child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That's exciting. Your parents, our parents must be thrilled. Very excited. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. How old will Hudzo be in December? He will be, he'll have just turned three. Oh, that's a nice gap. Yeah. it's a nice gap. Yeah. Not too close, not too far. What are you and your brother, two years? Uh, almost three. Okay, so very similar. We're like two years and eleven months. Very nice. Yeah, love it. You gonna name him Nick if it's a boy? Maybe Cole if it's a girl. We'll see how you play your cards. Okay. If you have a good year, maybe. Okay, sounds like a plan. <laughs> love so it. you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I don't. I mean, my news pales in comparison to that. So, I would just say, yeah, I had a great week. Um, my wife was. The best general contractor I've ever met in my entire life, making sure everything came together mm -hmm. with the opening of this pool. She had Memorial Day weekend as her deadline, as of the mark. And I got to say, my landscaper, Ron Raydon, shout out to Ron. He was like Tom Brady coming down against the Falcons, coming back in the fourth quarter. Was he afraid of the GC? I mean, <laughs> he might have. <laughs> I'm afraid of the GC. Um, but I mean, he just came through in the clutch at the end. He told me about 10 days ago, he's like, Nick. I know it doesn't look like we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Wow. And he did. He now, did she have this date pegged like last year when you started this? Basically, yes. Wow. Yeah. She went, I want it open for Memorial Day weekend. Impressive. And while it's not 100% done, it's like 95, 98% done, I'd have to mm -hmm. say even. And it looks absolutely beautiful. It does. I saw some pictures in your stories. It looks awesome. Can't wait to have you over. You know, Jen can come over this summer and she'll be a very cheap house guest. You know, no alcohol needed. Yeah. So yeah. You come on over. We'll hang out by on the our pool. hands. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we'll go out to dinner afterwards. There we go. It'd be fantastic. Just keep her awake. Leave the kids with Hudson. Lily can watch them and we'll just head down to La Masseria, have a nice little dinner or something. There we go. All right. Sounds like we made a plan right there. All right. Love it. Now, we always talk about home improvements and things like that, and they don't always go perfectly smooth. Do you mm -hmm. want to share how your experience has been? Um, sure. I mean, it's it's been an absolute nightmare the last <laughs> 10 days. Um, not, I th It's just like everybody's pointing everybody out. It's like the landscaper says, I need the electrician here. The electrician says, I need to be here with the pool guy. The pool guy says, I need the irrigation. Well, I mean, that's all not correct, but you get the point. They're all mm -hmm. saying, I need these other people here now. Everyone's yeah. got schedules, and it's hard to just coordinate everything. So pulling everything together in the very last, uh, in the 11th hour has been a challenge, mm -hmm. but we're making do. 
We're figuring it out. We've got electrical issues. They have a new panel being installed at my house right now. We it's have fun. irrigation issues. He's coming out at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Can't wait to see him to hopefully clear that up because the pool guy um, cut the supply lines for the irrigation on the north side of my house. So just need to figure all these different things out. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot to put back together and to button up to make this project complete. Fun stuff. Very fun. Very fun. Can't wait to have you see it. Can't wait to have Nate Dog over. It's going to be a good time. Maybe a little company cookout. You know? There we go. Absolutely. So be a good time. Looking forward to it. So, excellent. Well, I mean, I, I just I feel like everything else is going to be a letdown the rest of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm no sorry. Kidding. I was going to tell you, and then I was like, yeah, oh, he's going to ask on the podcast. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm so excited. All right. Well, that's our little intro. Yeah. Hell, hell of an intro. Yeah. What a, what a, <laughs> this is preserved for posterity, by the way, for, for, for future reference. When you have a, when your kid grows up, you can be like, hey, this is how your dad got rich and famous. <laughs> 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 he announced your birth on the podcast. Pretty cool. That Pretty is, cool. And Very that's cool. where we took off. That, that's where Polar swooped in and sponsored our podcast. <laughs> I mean, wow. it's about time because otherwise I'm going to go to LaCroix <laughs> and see what LaCroix has to say. This LaCroix is pretty tasty. Is right that how you that. pronounce it? LaCroix? LaCroix. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, the lime LaCroix. Mm. Fantastic. Top notch. It's so good. I might <clears throat> put it a hair above the polar, actually. Yeah, it seems like lime. it has a bit more flavor to it, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It's a more powerful lime. Mm. That is delicious. More lime forward, yeah. How mm. about the key lime LaCroix? That's no, a, not so a big no. key lime guy. Not a big key lime guy. Absolutely not. I'm going to disagree with you there. And I don't really want to disagree with you right now because I'm such a hide of those great news <laughs> that you just shared with me. But I'm going to have to disagree Sorry, with you Sorry, I feel that. like I derailed the whole podcast here. <laughs> It's fantastic. Uh. All right, let's jump into some real estate. That is what we do for a living. So our friends at the DOJ weighed in uh, on the NAR settlement, the NAR settlement, this past week. Their position was that they neither support, neither, neither, Neither support nor um, deny. La Croix. I'm sorry. Let's restart that. <laughs> the, neither. <laughs> the DOJ neither supports nor opposes the NAR settlement, but insists that no offers of compensation will be on the MLS, which is what the settlement does propose. So basically what they're saying is that they don't believe any offer of compensation should be advertised. I'd say we have not seen how this will ultimately play out yet, in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, in essence, they're basically taking um, the Switzerland stance of saying that we are not totally for this, not totally against it. I think deep down they want buyers to pay for buyer agents and sellers to pay for sellers agents. So, John, have you uh, read up on this article and their their most recent statement? Any any hot takes? I have. I think there's still a lot of uncertainty. I don't think we really know for sure. I was training some of our agents on this this morning. And gave them the current stance of here's where we are. But I warned them, this is, I'd say there's a 99% chance this changes again between now and August. Mm -hmm. So we shall see. I think it's still along the lines of what we've been anticipating. Um, and I think that we're ready for it. I think it's a good thing for the industry. I do too. I mean, I'm not totally uh, on against this. I do think that we're making a bigger deal out of it than we should mm -hmm. be. Uh, I recently was representing a buyer and went to go look at a listing, and that listing was indicating on MLS, as it still can until August 17th, that they were offering zero for compensation. No zero saying we'll, we'll open to negotiations on other amounts, just flat zero. And so I told my clients, hey, listen, this is the situation. Uh, obviously, we have a buyer representation agreement with a set fee on it. Now we have three options, really, is one is you pay for that out of pocket. Two is we ask for the seller to pay for it. And three is some combination of both. And in this case, they said, hey, listen, let's just make a strong offer, but ask for the seller to do it. Even though they're saying zero, we still put mm -hmm. that request for compensation in the offer. It was accepted. It wasn't even discussed. That's awesome. It was simply, okay, your offer is still the most attractive offer, even with the request for compensation. So we're going to agree to that because that's in all parties' best interests. Mm -hmm. So I bet you weren't the only one either. I would imagine not. Yeah. yeah. So I definitely think people are, are kind of freaking out for no reason. Like, there's, it's a simple conversation of these are the three ways we can handle this. How do you want to handle it? And let the clients kind of drive drive the train on that. Yeah, absolutely. It's like when we talk to sellers. You yes. know, you have different options. Mm -hmm. It's all about transparency and the client's choice. For sure. So the DOJ is basically saying they want agents and brokers out of the commission setting process, um, leaving it to sellers and buyers separately. So... 
Um, and I know we've taken a stance on on giving the sellers an option of you know, really three options. One is presetting a fee and saying we're going to control our costs. This is what we're going to offer. That is what it is. The second option is saying zero, but kind of negotiating on a case by case basis and indicating that we are open minded to that. Mm-hmm. And the third option is simply saying zero. So. Yep. That that second option of saying zero but being open to negotiations, I think we're seeing a lot of you know I, I don't I don't see that being a big stumbling block. Like hey, listen, here's my offer. I'm requesting this. This buyer is asking for X percent. This buyer is asking for Y percent. This buyer is asking for a flat fee. Mm-hmm. What's in the best interest of the seller? What's the best net number? Can you counter a certain term of that offer? You certainly can. Yep. So I just think it's a, another item to negotiate. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It is. I love negotiating. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm still I'm shocked Absolutely. you're having a baby. That's awesome. Second second kid. Oh yeah. Oof. yeah. Are you hoping for a boy or a girl? You know. It it doesn't matter. You can be honest. It you can be matter. honest. This is a safe no, space. So I have two um <laughs> I I think it would be cool either way because I think having a girl to kind of round out the family would be fun. Uh but girls the, are great. But at the same Until time Until they turn twelve and she's still great, but she's <laughs> yeah. difficult. Don't they listen to that? At this? times. Uh once in a while and I love her to death, but yeah, it's just <laughs> Oh, you're 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 outnumbered, huh? Twelve year old girls are not easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think it would be cool if he came, if it was a boy again and it came out looking just like you with like a faux like a strawberry blonde faux hawk. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like right out the gate. That'd be sick. That would be badass. <laughs> uh, but I think a boy would be fun too. You know, I look at Jen has a sister. They bond being two sisters. Sure. Um, not that a boy and a girl wouldn't bond and enjoy time later in life, but like my brother and I go to Celtics games and we have a great time and hang out in all sorts of ways. So. I think two boys would be fun. I think they'd have a fun time growing up, doing boy stuff and going to sports when they're older. But I think also having a boy and a girl would be kind of fun. So you're going to need a bigger house. No, I think we're good. You're going to need a bigger house. <laughs> we're putting I, a, I got one. I think that's uh, we're putting a small edition on week. right now. It's a paltry 4,800 and change square feet. That's a lot to take care of. <clears throat> Successful guy like you, you could definitely handle that. <laughs> Especially if you have more kids. Absolutely. Just keep it coming. <laughs> You'd be like groundsman. <laughs> just just do, do me one favor. It, no matter what the gender is, you're just going to be happy no matter what. Because it drives me crazy when I see like gender. First off, gender reveal parties in general are kind of like lame. That's, I, I, I think miss they're, that. They're lame I was as hell. For that, yeah, yeah they're, they're really more my generation, which mm-hmm. I'm not too down with it. But when you see a father... You know, find out he has a daughter, and he's just like the look of disappointment on their faces. And I'm just like, "What? How could you be disappointed?" Oh, see, hundred percent. Yeah. Happy, healthy, ten figures, ten I, toes. That's, all that's what I've been exactly, saying. Exactly. People yeah. keep asking if I have a preference, and I feel just like the stereotypical answer of oh, "I'll be happy so either way." But know? that is Are you true. You've been telling everybody but me up that until is now. True. Jeez, Louise, I feel yeah. hurt you, and you two are the first ones within these walls. Wow. Say, yeah. Let's these, stop the pot and announce it to the office. Philly. No. We're the only, um, yeah, we're the first no, people in this room. No, we started to tell <laughs> we started to tell family on Friday, nice. which you know you are family, but you weren't here. Okay. You know you weren't around to tell. Mm-hmm. So poor Phil had to suffer. I had two listing appointments, and then I had a Friday afternoon Memorial Day weekend uh, golf round. You know? I see where your priorities are. It's okay. I rented a scooter and drove around Newport. <laughs> <laughs> I see where your priorities are too. It's fine, guys. It's fine. Love it. Good stuff. I got to say, I was rooting for uh, I was rooting for a boy. First and foremost, Mm -hmm. after my first child. I think you should have kept going. No. Um, And I had a girl, and I was absolutely in love with that little girl, and still am, not uh, not in the past tense by any stretch. But I got to say, after I had a girl, I absolutely love being a girl dad, and I was rooting for a girl the second time, too. Didn't even want a boy. Just wanted more girls. Wow. Just keep the girls coming. Wow. And I uh, thankfully, uh, we did have another another girl, and she's fantastic as well. Just total girl dad. Is there music playing? There is something playing in the background. I thought it was an ice cream truck, but it's definitely my phone. Ice cream truck sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> I got like excited too. I was like, "Ooh, it's an ice cream truck." Something is playing in my ear right now. It's what's my- the uh, What's the best ice cream on an ice cream truck? What, what's your go to? Oh God, it's been. So, I don't remember the last time we got something off an ice cream truck. Got it. <laughs> really? You didn't grow up like chasing down that bell? No. You seem so, like you. What were. happens in Lincoln? Do you want to know? Um. You seem like a mascot for an ice cream truck. <laughs> <laughs> so what's interesting is the ice cream trucks around here, they ring the bell like ding, 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 ding. Yeah. And Jen is from upstate New York. And when she first moved here, she was like, what is that dinging? And I'm like, it's the ice cream truck. What are you talking about? She's like, why are they ringing a bell? Where's the music? And I was like, what are you talking about? So well, then, I've heard the music too. So then one time I'm in upstate New York with her. I think it was from Memorial Day weekend. And it was like this creepy clown music coming down the street. And I was like, what the hell is going on? 
And they're all like, what do you mean? It's the ice cream truck. I was like, it sounds like evil clowns are coming to take over the neighborhood. And it was like this creepy, creepy clown music that the ice cream truck was driving around with. It's two very different ice cream trucks around. You still haven't answered the question. What, <laughs> what is, was the question? <laughs> what's your go-to <laughs> on the ice cream truck? Uh, I <clears throat> feel like I always just got the frozen lemonade. It's been a long time That's since not, I ate I, ice cream truck. <laughs> Frozen lemonade. I, I just mm-hmm. looked up what are what are the definitive rankings of ice cream <clears throat> truck treats. Number one, bubble play. That, that was, was just good say. stuff. You remember that one, the yeah. pink one with the bubble gum in the middle? Yeah, that, those are awesome. Oh yeah. Or like the the cartoon characters with the gumball oh, eyes, yes. right? Yep. Yeah. Fantastic yep. stuff it's right the there. Twitty bird's eyes. Candy center <laughs> crunch. I don't remember that one. You guys ate a lot of ice cream truck food, huh? All the time, whenever they came around. Chip witch. That's a good one. Right oh, I there. do like chip witches. Yeah. Oh, here's what. Here's a classic right here. Chaco taco. 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 Oh yeah. Love a chaco <laughs> taco. <laughs> Oh, we, yeah. We should what have an ice cream heck? truck come to the company cookout we have scheduled for July 11th. Oh, we should. That would be great. Just have one parked out front. Yeah. yeah. Do Wait, have you never had a Choco Taco, John? No. He probably only eats vanilla what? ice cream, honestly. He probably I don't. He's a <laughs> vanilla ice cream kind of guy. No, I like chocolate, and I like chocolate peanut butter the most. How have you never Ooh. had a Choco Taco? I don't know. Well, I like don't a, know what a Choco Taco is. It's a taco. It's like a waffle cone shell filled with vanilla and chocolate ice cream with like a chocolatey, peanut buttery shell shell on the yeah, outside. It's really good. Unbelievable. You've never had a Choco Taco? No. Interesting. Have you ever been to Mexico? Yeah. Hmm. I have not. I'd it has nothing to, to do with I it. I love Mexico. I just wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate eclair, cotton candy bubblegum swirl, creamsicle. We are way bar. off the rails I hate here, creamsicles. Gentlemen. I think we're flowing, though. Fudgicle. <laughs> What's the other one I was thinking of? What's the, This is Rock, a, uh, the king uh, cone, the one with the, the little cone here. Rocket pop? Is that the other one you're thinking That's of? That's a good one, too. Yeah. King cone? Pink Panther. That's what they call me in high school. All right, school. anyway, we've moved along. King Cone. Snickers. What is a King Cone? <laughs> that was my nickname It's in like high a premium ice cream cone with <laughs> oh, like a little okay. bit of nuts and like some uh, oh, cold syrup um, on top. I don't want to waste time on this. They come in a box now. It's like blue and white. I don't know. I forget what it it's is. It's not a waste of time. <laughs> Hudson's been a giant. <laughs> I'm it's it's little edited. cones with like the hard top shell and the nuts on top. I hope you get Hudson ice cream from the ice cream truck next time it comes around, so... We take him to uh, to Josie's and come on. Okay. Ooh. What do you Josie's like to go? on a vacation. Where do you like fun? to go, Nick, Hilltop, for ice cream? Hilltop's my go-to. Oh, yeah. That's a good spot. Yep. You ever go to the uh, is it ice cream machine? No. Yeah. That's in Lincoln, right? No, that's in Cumberland. Oh, it's Cumberland, great yeah. great ice it's cream. It's good, yeah. Long lines. Long ass line, yeah. yeah. But phenomenal ice cream. Super, wor- it's worth Way it. too far north for Nick. I don't go that far north. Yeah, this is like north, north Cumberland. Unless I have to. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move Anyways. along. We, we went into a wild card well before the wild card <laughs> section. So let's finish All up this right. first bit of industry news with Zillow's May market report. They had a chart for the hottest metro markets. I really do talk about this a lot, but every every economist, different website has their own rankings and ways they track this stuff. But mm-hmm. they basically said, Zillow said that home values are up in 47 out of 50 metros. And the Providence metro market ranked number six out of those 50 largest metros Mm -hmm. for the highest year-over-year increase in home values, according to the ZHVI. Do you know what that stands for? Zillow Home Value Index? You are a genius. Did I get it? You did. Nailed it. Nailed it. (laughs) Nice stuff. So, yes, number six out of 50 for the highest year-over-year increase. So, Providence still holding strong. We revealed, not revealed, we discussed Realtor.com's rankings uh, last pod, I believe. Mm-hmm. And uh, Zillow is uh, in agreement that the Providence Metro market is in fuego. Whoosh. Doing well. The optimal selling time. They are saying, I, I believe, again, Realtor.com had a post about the ideal day to list a property. It's usually the third week of April. That's what they said. Zillow's mm-hmm. coming out with a bit of a different take. Yeah. They're saying the first two weeks of June are prime time. Okay. So sellers, if you're out there listening, they're saying that homes listed during the first two weeks of June sell for 2.3% or $7,700 more on average than other times of the year. So we are on the cusp of the ideal two weeks to list your home. That's good because we got a lot of sellers in the hopper. Mm -hmm. Nate Dog over there, his calendar looks 
a little hectic. It's dire. It's what we like to see. <laughs> it's his first spring market, and I'm a little worried for the guy. Like, are you ready for this? <laughs> He's got it. It's uh, cooking. Nate, um, do you have a spring market eye twitch over there? Is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I thought I was just, I, I, I drank a lot of milk this weekend. Welcome to the show, big dog. <laughs> thought my calcium was just high. First spring market eye twitch. And I will say, Nate, if you do get overloaded with shoots, mm-hmm. uh, we have the ability, uh, not that we have to, but we have the ability to outsource editing on those photos not if a chance. need be. <clears throat> not not, not a chance. I like that. You no. own it. This is <clears throat> my product. That's Mine. Right. That's right. I stand by my work. Love it. I, you know? I love someone who's got some pride and like just like you know, I'm not doing that. This is, a, this is my output. I want yeah. this to be perfect. Nobody's editing my photos. Love that. Mine. Offers on the table, but I respect the declination. <laughs> love it. <laughs> the declination. <laughs> That's a word, right? De- you combine declaration and delineation. I think. No, declination is a word. Declination. So, anyways, great like call to action declination. here. Declination. Nicholas, great yeah, call to action. What does it mean? Formal <laughs> refusal. <laughs> <laughs> so not really. Yeah, it does. It works. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Boy. It's a very word. esoteric word. We'll uh, <laughs> keep between us. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> I, like, I like that we have secrets. <laughs> Man. This is either gonna be a rocky one or he's gonna have a lot of editing. I think to do. I think we're rolling so far, dude. We're having fun, John. Anyways, Just loosen up a little bit. <laughs> God damn, eat something besides Some vanilla ice by cream. The, I know, right? Have a choco taco. <laughs> have another Metaphorically, kid. give speaking. me a choco taco. <laughs> Let me try this thing. I'll bring some Choco Tacos in. Yeah. All right. Gout on it. Zilla. So, it almost said like you sounded like you said gouting on it. And I was <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a direct Don't attack, attack on me. Nick. <laughs> Did you have a lot of seafood this weekend? Uh, I think I had some, yeah. yeah. Yeah, some oysters, some red wine. I did not have any oysters, did not have any red wine. Phil did bring over a ton of shrimp cocktail when he came over to see the pool. There you go. You know what's funny, too? I love my dad. I'm glad he's not in here right now. Man, we are just <laughs> all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> Is I've He's probably around. not listening. He's known me for 39 years at this point. Your whole life. He, my whole life. Yeah. And I don't really like shrimp cocktail that much. <laughs> <laughs> but I know he does. He loves it. And so I didn't have the heart to say, Dad, I don't really like shrimp cocktail that much. That's but he, sweet. Now, yeah. in his defense. He brought it over for himself. <laughs> well, no, I wasn't going to attack him there. But in his defense, shouldn't you know that he doesn't like cream of mushroom soup? No, he likes mushrooms on his pizza. I just got him some soup. He said, right. he says to me, Shots right. fired. I'm picking up lunch at the Corner House Deli. Great spot owned by the owners of the shanty. I'm a big fan. I like it. It's right by my house. So I swung by there, picked up a nice little uh, little small steak and cheese. It's good size. It's not too big. It's a good size. It holds me over. I don't feel like I just you know gorged on a steak steak and cheese sandwich. Anyway, I'm gonna say, hey Phil, I'm gonna go to Corner House Deli. Do you want anything while I'm there? And he says, if the soup of the day sounds good, please get it for me. I don't know what sounds good to you. <laughs> and so I get to the front counter, and there's a little sign right there. It says soup of the day, cream of mushroom soup. And it sounds horrible to me. But I, <laughs> Well, he said if it sounds good. But then I'm thinking. It's completely like subjective. Mushrooms. Yeah. And I'm like, whenever we get Caserta's pizza, shout out to Caserta's. I used to say best pizza in Rhode Island. Not anymore. It's still up there. When I Twins took it down, huh? No. Mickey's. Oh. Mickey's Grandma's Pie with Hot Honey down on Wickford. Unbelievable. All right. <laughs> Sidebar. Sidebar. We're going to have to talk about that later. But anyways, continue with the cream and mushroom. Okay. So I go, when he gets Caserta's, he always wants pepperoni and mushrooms. I'm like, so the guy likes mushrooms. And just last week, he had um, he spilled mushrooms all over himself um, by accident. Oh, don't go there. Well, I, mean, we all I know. Have, we all have accidents. I, I have accidents. You know? You, know? you have accidents all the time. I do. It's hard. You <laughs> That's know? why we keep pampers in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> anyways. Anyways, so I'm like, the guy likes mushrooms. So I'm going to get some cream and mushroom soup. <laughs> And he thought he didn't like it. Didn't go over. You it know what the not. problem is? There were no pepperoni in it. There was not. No. Oh. Yeah. All right. Back to industry news. Concluding this Zillow May report, they talked about some home improvements. John. Yeah. They said that most sellers make two or more improvements before listing their home for sale. And said further that features like outdoor TVs, outdoor showers, outdoor kitchens. In matte black finishes, can help homes sell for three point one percent more than homes that don't make those upgrades. Hmm. Did that surprise you in any way? That does surprise me, and I feel like it's 
I I don't think that would be the case here in Rhode Island. You don't like outdoor showers? Maybe. I do. Pool or pond? However. Uh, pond would be good for you? You know, if you went to, <laughs> <laughs> if you went inland <laughs> and put in an outdoor shower, I don't think you're increasing that home's value by 3%. If you go to the coast, maybe. Or if you go to a lake or maybe somewhere that has a pool. I got to tell you, I'm a big fan of outdoor showers. Are you going to put one in? I don't think so. Hell, you're redoing everything else at your house. Why I not should. just add a shower in there? I'm running out of room. Um, <laughs> but outdoor showers, I do love. I rented a house on Block Island once for my annual summer vacation. Hmm. which We haven't gone to Block Island in a while. <laughs> Definitely got to get back there. <laughs> love that place. But anyway, um, this one particular house had an outdoor shower. I didn't shower inside the whole week. I was out there looking at the water, showering away, just like it was the most peaceful experience. Yeah, it's nice. I have ever had showering. It was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask, were you? What your most? Yeah, what your most peaceful experience showering was? <laughs> that was in the wild that's card the question, section. Yeah. But we, yeah, but we, we took right. care of that. So that's great. <laughs> we are we are all over the place. <laughs> this does kind of surprise me. It wouldn't be the first. I feel like these are more luxury upgrades. They are. They definitely are. You know what the trend I see there is outdoor improvements. And I am, for one, very happy to hear that because I just sunk a lot of money into my outdoor (laughs) space. So I am very glad about that. I have to tell you, too, you inspired me in the worst way. It's not good because Jen and I have always said that our yard is kind of on a hill. So we have a flat patio, but then off the patio, our yard pitches downhill. So Mm -hmm. not really practical for in your own pool. And then this weekend... Not even could make it happen. This, just a little landscaping, a little bobcat, no big deal. Yeah, so this weekend, you know, I'm seeing What do you mean yours. kind of on a hill? It's on a massive... I've been it's there. On, it's on like the top of Mount Crumpet. It's yeah. a massive hill. I'd be afraid to get my mail at night. You've got little BMX bandits doing... <laughs> doing uh, <laughs> we doing do. ollies going down We there. We do. That's a problem. Uh, Is he still coming but, by? No. I think I scared him. What did you say to him? I opened my door. Can you give a little backstory first? Can you? Can you? Tell sure. us about your BMX Bandit. Man, yeah. they're all, all over the map on here. Remind me to get back to the actual home improvement. Okay. Uh, but so I think it was two weeks ago. Um, I look out my front window one day. and two Can you na- give us the abbreviated version, Cliff Notes? Sure. So two neighborhood kids come up my driveway, use my... My driveway's got a slight slope to it. Uh, <laughs> that's maybe an understatement. It's pretty steep. So they use my driveway to get speed going down the hill because uh, the street is also a hill. And they get speed. I'm like, oh, man, hope they don't keep doing that. <laughs> they get speed. So the next day, we're not home, and the ring goes off. And I look, <clears throat> and the kid walks his bike up the driveway. But instead of using the driveway to get speed to go back down the hill, he rides his bike down <laughs> two flights of stairs that I have from my driveway to a lower parking area where my mailbox is. I was like, that's not good, because if this kid goes head over handlebars... It's not going to be pretty. I wish we had a picture. Maybe Nate can overlay a picture of your front stairs. So he was riding down the stairs. Riding down the stairs. That's insane. That's a a homeowner's claim waiting to happen. You're not kidding. Do you have an umbrella? So, no. What? (laughs) I should do that, though. You're having a second child. You should definitely get an umbrella. So later that night, we're getting Hudson ready for bed. I don't don't know. And the ring goes off. (laughs) Insurance. And all of a sudden, I see Jen look at her phone, and she goes... It's him. Go get him. <laughs> so I run down the stairs and I open my front door and this kid just standing at the top of the stairs on his bike, ready to do it again, just looks at me like, who? Huh? And so I look at him and I'm like, can you not do that? That's a, that's way too nice. You should have kept that at your property. He's no? a kid. Oh, all right. So, <laughs> so I'm like, can you not do that? And he yeah. looks back at me like, all like, what? <laughs> like, I don't want you to fall and get hurt. Can you please not yeah. do that? And he just kind of like nodded his head. He had a buddy in the street on a scooter just looking at me like, oh, man, he just got caught. So he backs up and then goes down the slope part of the driveway and almost got hit by a car. Oh my God. A car Jesus. came around the corner. I was like, this is why you don't do that. These kids yeah. these days. Not Get long off my for this, lawn. Not long for this world. So I feel like such an old man. Every time like I hear a loud car or kids go down the street, I'm like, get off my lawn. And Quiet. Jen's like, my wife's pregnant. Jen's just like, <laughs> Jen's like old man, sit down. <laughs> How's she feeling? Uh, better now. Okay. Did she have some morning sickness? Oh, yeah. It wasn't good. That's the worst. Yeah. Angel had it for like nine months with our first child with Lily. It's a long time. It is. It was brutal. That's why we had waited five years to do it again. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't help when you're being ha- harassed by neighborhood hooligans. That's no. Right. no. Seriously. Hooligans. 
crazy. If you want to get out of that area, I know a good area. But anyway, so yeah, it's rough. So we were over talking there. about yeah. putting in a pool this weekend because <laughs> all of your stuff inspired me. And Hudson's out there playing with his water table, and I'm like, yeah, no, you know, that. I'm drinking high noons, chilling on my patio. But man, it would be nice to have a pool. So I'm like, how do we make it work? And now I'm just the wheels are spinning. I'm like, okay, we could do. You know, walk off the patio into the pool, infinity pool on the other side. But then we need a series retaining wall. We just went way off in the left field. It wasn't good. Well, there's a will, there's a way. I know. And let's just rewind a second because I was trying to encourage you to purchase the home that I sold right next door to me. You could have experienced and enjoyed this pool for zero dollars <laughs> anytime you wanted to. <laughs> but instead, you wanted to stay on Mount Tatro up in Lincoln. <laughs> Doesn't have a bad ring to it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mount Tatro. So, solitude. Fortress right. solitude. solitude. Circling back. Anyways, I feel like we are way over here. Stop I also found that. it very interesting that Zillow mentioned soapstone countertops and beverage centers are outperforming quartz counters and wine fridges in 2024. You need storage for the high noons. You definitely do. I have a beverage center in my kitchen. I was ahead of the times. I was ahead of the curve there. Nate's just laughing at me. <laughs> beverage rolling center. His. He Absolutely. thinks he's so trendy. It's like the most middle-aged man thing I've ever <laughs> I'd go to beverage center. I do. So tell me, what's in your beverage center? Uh, juice boxes. <laughs> That's a personal question. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you. I'm fine with that. Juice boxes, uh, Gatorades, High Noons, Okay. Uh, both the tea version and the vodka base ver- version. Okay. And then numerous seltzer waters, a couple of bottles of white wine, just for when friends come over who want that. Not my jam. Um, and I think there's a couple of the kombucha, kombucha. I don't know how to kombucha? say it. Kombucha. Kombucha. My wife enjoys that stuff. That is quite a variety. Ooh, it is. Sounds nice. It's a, mm. it's a beverage center. It's right. Not, you it's can't <laughs> get that in the wine fridge. <laughs> no, absolutely not. We've got a variety in okay. our beverage center. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Wild card. Hypothetical like... question of the week. This is a new segment on the pod. John, <laughs> <laughs> would you take a pill that removes your body's need for sleep? If it was given to you, you can stay awake 24 hours a day. 100%. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Reasoning. Do I have to pick one? This is a discussion. Okay. So, first of all, I think it would be fascinating to just see what happens in the night. You know, mm-hmm. does everyone else sleep? Are people up and moving around now? Different animals? You know, kind of cool. Night Enjoy the night. Goggles, night vision goggles. Night vision goggles. Okay. Um, also, sidebar. I got up the other night. At, it was like 3 o'clock. The birds were already chirping. Oh, yeah, they get up early now. Those things get up early. Oh, yeah. But anyways, also think of how productive you could be. Mm-hmm. You know? Enjoy a little TV time like you do now before bed, but instead of falling asleep, get up. Get to your workout. Get to work for the next day. Maybe do some yard work or some stuff around the house. You could be so productive. Sure. Okay. Sounds awesome. Nate, would you take a pill? To be able to stay awake 24 hours a day and never sleep again. I've talked to my wife about this. So would, have you? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so would I be? Would I have the option to sleep? If no. You don't. So no, you can't sleep if you want to. Absolutely not. Well, it's hold, so you <clears throat> can. Suck. So you can be normal and just not take the pill. Yes. Or if oh, you okay. take the never pill, never get tired. But if you take the pill, yeah. You no option to sleep. No You're option. awake forever. You're awake forever. For the rest of your life. For the rest of or your life. Or you can't don't just take... not take the pill and... and I'm uh, I'm going to say no. You're either awake forever and you feel great. You never feel tired. You never have the adverse effects of not sleeping. <sighs> or you continue on as is. Yes. Why wouldn't you take the pill? That's tough. Because sleep is like the way your body resets itself. No, but, but that, you don't that's need out it. the window. That's no longer needed. It, like you're not tired. But no. I mean like mentally. Everything would you is wanna, perfect. Would you, everything's perfect. Everything's perfect. Oh, yeah. 100%. You'd stay away if from If I was time. like, yeah. I mean, I take Adderall. That's pretty much that. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would. Why? No. I like sleeping. Yeah. I mean, I do too. But I do think like about, sleeping yeah. as well. I think it's enjoyable. But I would. I'm one of those people who like I have a tough time. Even when I'm relaxing, quote unquote, yeah. not feel, like feeling guilty that I'm relaxing and yeah. not being productive. My wife actually tells me I need to chill the hell out. I, I, I see what you're saying. I'd love to have more hours in the day and be more productive. I, we all say that all the time. Yeah. I definitely agree with that aspect. But I also think at some point you're going to get bored out of your mind. Like, yeah. So what do you do? Like two in the morning, three in the morning, four in the morning. Work out, Every do stuff around the house, work know. on your craft. It would be better to be like to live as long as you'd like to. And still be able to sleep. That's yeah. probably the better version of that, right? Because then you could say, all right, <clears throat> when you're done, after mm-hmm. 300 years, you could say, I'm done. I pack it in. That's Good. It. I did what I had to do. 300 is a long time. But still be able to sleep. I'd sign up for 100. 
You shot it for a hundred? Ninety? Ninety-five? I would I would love to be like a vampire that's like thousands of years. <laughs> you're old. slated you're slated for one eleven though. Yeah, what is it? One eleven or one eighteen? Death clock gave you one eleven. That's insane. Oh he my big to... my big news. My big news is well not You're having a baby too? No. I oh, no. You didn't want to upset. Round of applause. Hey! No, it's actually it's actually maybe a little bit more impactful. Whoa. Whoa. Start, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I had my first drink in in six months. Wow. This weekend, last How weekend. Was that? It was good. It what was, was fine. the first drink? What did you choose? So I, um, okay. So you've had a daiquiri that they give you like a restaurant, right? I Where mean, it's like frozen with like. When you know, I was sixteen. Exactly right. Yeah, okay. I hate those versions of daiquiris. So this is why he asked if I go to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. So my favorite, uh, one of my favorite like summer drinks is a classic daiquiri. It's just lime juice, simple syrup, and light rum shaken over ice, and it's very refreshing. It's like summer in a glass. So I had. The bar that I went to, uh, Newport. Uh, shout out to the Smokehouse. They're great. Uh, barbe- That's a good spot. Great barbecue restaurant. It's a restaurant. really good spot. Uh, pulled pork nachos are out of this world. So I had uh, two of those daiquiris and then uh, and then a beer, and it was like a nice cerveza and just Sounds cruise great. around Newport. It was nice. Right. You know? buzz going? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just a little. You know, nothing crazy. I think I'm still gonna stick to like drinking very seldom though. Okay. Because I did notice that during the five, almost six months, I did have more energy. Um, sure. It wasn't like, uh, you know, when you go out a lot of times, it's like expected that mm-hmm. you're going to drink like mm-hmm. every occasion. And I just was like, it was nice being able to say like, I don't really want to. I'm just I don't have to to have fun. I can just hang out. You know, what a contrarian. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm pretty I'm pretty cerebral guy. So, <laughs> so when are you going to come uh, get a workout climbing up Mount Tatro and. How whenever you, it? whenever you invite him. Uh, last time no, you cool. invited him over, and he went. He stopped drinking for six <laughs> months afterwards. <laughs> God, I didn't you, think it could be. What topped. are you trying to say? I heard about a bourbon bar, and uh, maybe a little bit of overindulgence. I'm sorry, it would have been nice to have been invited. You yeah, were. Nick's, Nick's got a pool. Moving on. Nick's got a pool now. Um, so I can probably go to his. So place. you would pass on the pill. Wouldn't you feel so guilty when we were all working? And you were just sleeping like a lazy log? I don't know. I mean, one thing you have to think about, too, is the stage of your life. Like, right now, I would love to be able to stay up all night long and not have any kind of issue. But I feel like when I'm older and starting to slow down a little bit and kind of enjoying the fruits of my labor, I want to, like, sleep and wake up and be like, ah, like that feeling. You, you never have that again. You so, have it all the time. I'm, I'm going to say no. I, I kind of like life the way that it was intended. I'm going to keep it that way. Uh, all right, let's move on. Memorial Day weekend, we kind of already talked about. Um, big news from the Tetro household. We talked about the pool, so no need to discuss that again. Let's talk about your Boston Boston, Boston Celtics, John. Oh, man. What a game. You stay up last night? Uh, you stay I was up for dozing. I was dozing in the fourth quarter. And How I woke do you up, doze to that? I mean... <laughs> Because I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> but if you took the pill, you wouldn't be. Uh, it's Anyways, true. man, what a series. Can I I was gonna say I was dozing, but I did wake up in like two minutes to go in the fourth. So I did see them celebrate. I did see the win. I saw the whole yeah. All right. So you woke up for the fun part. Was it <laughs> <laughs> not the not the painstaking uh, fourth yes, quarter that yes. was. I, I, they were like the, what were they down? Like eighteen points or something like that? No, that was Saturday. Okay. What were they down last night? Uh nine. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I might have gotten to eleven at one point. They had, they went down by nine twice. Those refs took back one of Jalen's threes. It was okay. awful. Um, but they got down by nine. It was the biggest lead by either team of the game. So it was a very close game. Sure. Wire to wire. Uh, when I dozed off, I figured they were going to lose. And I woke back up and I said, whoa. Okay, yeah. All right, let's and go. And they stormed back. Mm-hmm. But Saturday, they were down by 18 with five minutes left in the third. Mm-hmm. Um, and they came back. Man, Tatum has probably the most beautiful pass i've ever seen in a basketball game you see it high praise did you see it no i fell asleep in that <sighs> one too you gotta see it it was unbelievable so he started Why did the game start so late you know just... prime time you know so he took a pass at the top Getting of the three-point arch he rushed there were like three defenders it looked like he was going to go to the rim and they were all ready to block it and he just no look went right behind him passed it backwards horford was in the corner sunk a three the rest is history but anyways great series Great games, several comebacks. Um, certainly didn't feel like a four-game sweep. Love it. But I'll take it. Let's go. Yeah. Tell me what you're most excited about for the finals. Well, I would I'll tell you what I'm most excited about. I'm most excited about to see Kyrie Irving come back into town and play the Celtics. I hope they smush them. That was one of my two. I was torn between two. That was my he hesitation. He took too long. It should have been first reaction. So... 
Dave Portnoy had a good video. Yeah. Um, after I think it was game three. Uh, about the Kyrie factor and how fun that's going to be. He has come back here since he left. I know that. And they beat him. Not in the NBA finals. But what I'm, I think what I'm more excited about, and it's going to play into that, is Tatum got his attitude in this last series. I hope so. We've been waiting his whole career to like get that edge and get that attitude. Yeah. And I think him and Jalen Brown both finally have their attitude, mm. and I can't wait. I hope they keep it in the finals. If they just kiss Kyrie's butt the whole time, I'm going to be so pissed. No, no. So no. pissed. Nope. They have their attitude. I hope and so. I can't I hope wait right. for it. I hope you're right. Hope you're right. All right. There's our Celtics take. Anything else you want to add to it? What games are you going to? I know your brother has season tickets. Um, I was going to game five. So that was the only downside of winning last night is, you know, missed a potential sure. Eastern I Conference clincher. I remember hearing you say there's no way they're going to sweep them. So I'm going to take game five. And then they swept Well, them. so here's the thing is I was going to yeah. go last Thursday. Yeah. Uh, but. I would have been probably out in Boston till the wee hours of the morning, and then With Jen's a pregnant a, wife at home. Jen's or... appointment was at eight o'clock Friday. Oh, that's why. Uh, so secrets. switched it to this week, you know. <laughs> and I'd rather have them lock up the series, get healthy, get Porzingis back. So Sorry. yeah, is Porzingis going to come back game one? What do you think? I think so. Okay. I have something to say about the Celtics game. Let's hear it. All right, so I'm not a big basketball fan, but that was the one that, that played on Saturday, right? Saturday. And last they, they, last won, they won final, right? Like at the last second. So I was at a bar at uh, Howl at the Moon for my wife's birthday. Probably went bananas in there. It was insane. It was like, so there's a live band playing and they're playing like all 90s music requests. So everyone's dancing, having a great time. As soon as the game started getting towards the end, everyone shifted their body like back to the band and it was like, absolute bedlam everyone's going crazy so i even got into it. i was like oh this is great let's go celtics and it was yeah it was a wild game they That's were cool. down 18 at the end yeah. of the third like game over yeah That's game insane. over and then they came back and it was unbelievable a lot of energy and nick was napping at the same time nick was right? like, <laughs> we were standing up on gotta, stools <laughs> gotta get my beauty rest <laughs> unbelievable. wait till you guys are pushing 40 all right hypothet hypothetical question number two. Oh, what food would you eat if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life pizza you stole my answer. <laughs> Reasoning. I thought of fancier things. Like, I was like, ooh, veal parm. But I'd get sick of that, I think. Pizza, there's variety. You can mix up the toppings. You have some veggies. You have some dairy. You have some carbs. Mm -hmm. It's a good mix. This is one time where you literally stole the words out of my brain. <laughs> Was so, that your reasoning too? Exactly my reasoning <laughs> is you got breakfast pizza, you got so many oh, yeah. buffalo chicken, barbecue oh, chicken, yeah. regular pepperoni and cheese, regular cheese, a pepperoni and mushroom. I mean, you got everything. Hell, all these make a dessert of, pizza. You, yeah, absolutely. I mean, all these different taco pizza, yeah. I mean, hot wiener pizza. You can Ooh. make oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> margarita. I mean, everything. Talk about pizza. I mean, yeah. Mickey's pizza, Wickford. So Haven't had you it. said you wanted to come back and circle back to this topic. Okay. Mickey's pizza has a grandma's pie. Drizzle a little hot honey over it. It's down in Wickford. Unbelievable. Shout out to the Brignolis for that recommendation. I think it's my favorite pie in Rhode Island now. I haven't had it. We should have a field trip. All right. Let's Jen, do it. We could do a little pool day. Jen could drive us down there after a couple of high <laughs> noons. Get a little pizza. Come back. There we go. Love it. Nate Dog, one food. Rest of your life. What <clears> we got? Okay. So if you're saying pizza, you're not taking into account life expectancy or health in any way it's just like <laughs> he's, just gotta, uh, he's, he's gonna, gonna go like <laughs> kale or something weird no, i'm not but, but if we're going off of that it can be anything right sure mm. i could i could honestly probably eat st like steak mashed potatoes and like three some, times a day some foreign former can you green have both every single day what well, this is the thing with pizza. If you're talking like multiple toppings, it's kind of that's kind of a cop out, yeah, right? Because you could just scrape out. the yeah. toppings off and be like, "Oh, I'm having steak now. I'm having." So it's True. one type of pizza. So if we had one, one type. type of pizza, I still think I might go pizza. Really? Yeah. What would the pizza be? Because I can eat pizza for breakfast. I can eat pizza. Yeah. For breakfast. Yeah. Would it be sure the stuff. hot honey drizzled over it Granny's might be that pie? One. Yeah, I might. I mean, it would get tiring after a while, and I hate to even say that, but <laughs> I'm thinking like a good buffalo chicken pizza. What else could you eat every single meal the rest of your life? That's the point. It's an no. impossible question to answer. <laughs> no, it's not. Pizza. You stupid man. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've neglected the whole point of what we said. You can't. You can only have one type of pizza. You could do buffalo chicken pizza every day. Every day for the rest of your life. Yes. Three, three meals a day. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's unbelievable. I think we should do a side bet on how long he can make it eating just <laughs> 
<laughs> whoever whoever wins gets a uh, dinner at a Capitol yes, Grill. Yes, exactly. What yeah. do I get for putting my body through? If this? you make it past either one of ours, um, me and Nate will set an over under. Yeah. <laughs> You could be like the new we'll Morgan Spurlock. Yeah. All right, so yeah, uh, fine. Oh, hold on. oh my god! <laughs> right? Who is that? Is that the he, super he's guy passed guy? away. He's yeah. passed away, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Super size guy. He did all his experiments. Didn't he also have a massive drinking problem? I I can neither confirm nor deny that. I think that's what I read. Yeah, is he had possible. liver failure of some kind. Well, there you go. Yep. Yep. So, John, what is it? What's the What's the verdict? Rest in peace. Mar- yes, rest in peace, Morgan Spurlock. And John, you're the new guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> I would say two weeks. Like, you I think, think you can, can make, make it, it two weeks. You think I can make it two weeks eating nothing but no way. Pizza. <laughs> Who's funding this? <laughs> I'll, buy, I'll pay for it. I will you'll, honestly you'll pay, pay. contribute to this as well. Oh, man. You think he makes <laughs> it two weeks? I think he could do it. I don't think he goes longer than that. I don't think he could go uh, two weeks. Can I take vitamins? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna need that's something. You're worried about your vitamin D. <laughs> I'm worried about everything. I think he makes it. I think he start. He starts on a on a Monday. He makes it to Saturday, and he says, "I'm done." It's probably more accurate. Yeah. No. Do you want to try this? Yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, I think you make it six days. Jen's Jen's gonna kill me. <laughs> six days. I bet I could. I don't know. All right, let's move along. Well, let's, uh, <laughs> we'll revisit that. If you want to make that happen, we'll make it happen. All right. It, the ball's in your court. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the rest. Let's talk about what the prize is. It'll go from there. All right. Industry news number two. Clever just came out with another, another article called Home Selling Trends, Successes, and Struggles Heading into 2024. Some interesting takeaways. They said that 47% of home sellers cried during the home selling process. That's sad. It's really sad. 47% cried? Very sad. I'm getting sad just thinking about it. You know what? The next part makes <laughs> sense, though. With higher stress for those selling without an agent. That is true. Do you think 47% of our sellers actually cry during the process? I certainly hope not. I hope not, too. I wouldn't think so. Yeah. No. If you had to put a a guess on a percentage, what would you say? I mean, I'd hope the only time our sellers cry is if they're emotional about leaving, you know, a long-term home or something like that. I've seen that numerous times. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know, ten percent. Yeah, I you know think why that's I bet more would cry. Why? Because they see Nathaniel Davidson leave their house, and they're like, "I just wanted more of him." His name is Nathan David Walker. And they just wanted. <laughs> Unbelievable. They just wanted some more. <clears throat> Nate Nathan. Nathan. Uh, I'm. Uh, I think it's probably higher than ten percent. I mean, it's a hard market. People lose out on offers. They lose out buyers back out after inspections. Financing issues come up. Uh, I mean, it is a stressful process. Yeah, I ho- I hope it's only ten percent. Yeah, I don't 47%. think it's forty percent. Forty seven seems high. That's a big number. It is. It is. All right. Next one. They say thirty three percent of sellers wish they priced their home differently, but fifty percent said they wish they priced their home differently for those who didn't use an agent. That makes sense. It does make sense. So mm. now thirty three percent wish they priced their home differently. Do you think the most wish they priced it higher? Lower? My guess Mm -hmm. is it's mostly sellers who listed their house, got multiple offers, and said, oh, I should have just listed it higher. I would have got more money. Yep. In reality, you know, it was probably priced right. Maybe not all the time, but most of the time it was probably priced properly Mm -hmm. because in this market, if you price it properly... You're going to get that bidding war. You're going to find out just how far a buyer is willing to go. Let me tell you a little story on that one. And you probably got a better price and terms. Recently at a sale, 209 Northbridge Avenue in Warwick, in our uh, one of our farms, Greenwood Manor. Mm-hmm. Met with the seller, talked about where we wanted to price this home. There was a similar home in the area, similar raised ranch, that had closed at 465 I believe. And uh, that was the highest sale in the neighborhood at the time. They said, well, we should just price it at 465 right? And I said, well, that is the highest sale in the neighborhood over the last 12 months in this case. Uh, and even I think it may have been all time at that point. And simply said, you know, we could list it at 465 Certainly can go that route. But I think you should actually look at what that home was priced at. And they were priced at 439 So we decided to price it very similar. I actually think it was listed at 435 So we decided to price it at the same number at 435 of what they listed at. Mm-hmm. Not what they sold at. So we maximized the exposure on that listing. We had insane amounts of interest in that home. 
we had I think that one had what twenty four offers on it somewhere in that range mm-hmm. twenty eight maybe um, so it had a ton of activity over a hundred people through the open houses over two days and it ended up closing at I believe five I should know this off the top it was of over five I think I it was five fifteen if I'm not mistaken it's insane so it went way over we were asking four thirty five set a new high price for the market mm-hmm. in the area. And the reason why was simply because we priced it at a point, a point that positioned it for the maximum exposure possible. Mm-hmm. So where are you positioned in the market? Not what are you going to sell at, but where do you position yourself for the most amount of eyeballs that you can possibly get on your listing? Yep. Bingo. I was hoping for a little bit more color there. Well, I, I was. I didn't want to basically repeat what you said, but I. I didn't want to repeat what you said, but I always tell sellers pretty much the same thing. Is the greatest way to make sure we maximize your price and terms is to get as many people through the front door as possible. Love it. And you nailed it, my friend. Boom. Kudos to you. We're back. Back. John was just expressing his concern with how much shooting the SHT we were doing on this episode. We had to remind him that is what the podcast is called. (laughs) Yes. So Mm -hmm. deal with it. All right. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Agent complaints. 35% of sellers felt their agent failed them with common issues, including pressure. Poor communication and unethical behavior. This makes me sad. It makes me sad. You know what's even more sad? What? I believe it. You know what? I, let's look at the bright side. 65% of, of sellers did not feel this way. It's true. So if you have any hint of this, Mr. and Mrs. Consumer, talk to more agents. There's yes. some really good ones out there. Mm-hmm. 65% of them do what's in your best interest. Help you out. Great communication. Very ethical behavior. Absolutely. I hope it's a number higher than 65%, honestly. But Mm -hmm. the point is, make sure you're comfortable with whoever you're working with. You need someone who cares and who's going to put your interests first. Yes. They also touched upon some negotiation challenges. 38% of sellers said their agent botched negotiations, while 49% of FISBO sellers wish they had negotiated more. Not surprised on the FISBO part. What is a FISBO, John? For sale by owner. Okay. Yes. I knew that. It was clarifying for the people at home, obviously. (laughs) All right. That, that topic wasn't quite as interesting as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> it's the most transparent podcast host <laughs> ever. It's because you're too busy talking about, what is it? Chaco Taco? Yeah, but that's where we shine. That's, exactly. cream, that's where we shine. Taco. 100%. That's where we Come shine. on now. You know, I often say, when you swing for the fences, sometimes you only have warning track power. You know, sometimes it just doesn't get there. You know, sometimes you fly out, you pop it up, and that was a pop up. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes it's like your tee shot on the ninth hole Friday. Oh, that was brutal. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. I barely made that to the first pond. It's disgusting. Right in the middle of the, that round, I got a call from the electrician like, oh, no, you got to replace the whole panel. Oof. Plus the sub panel. Plus this, plus that. How much more is that going to cost me? You more, said what? More than a Choco Taco. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Meanwhile, Rapid. losing, you know, 40 bucks that day to... Sardelli and Scorp wasn't so bad. All right, Resi <laughs> Club. <laughs> All right, the next topic. This was actually a very interesting article from Resi Club. Do you know what Resi Club is, John? Uh, residential? <laughs> he doesn't even follow our industry. <laughs> Lance Lambert was the, I believe, chief economist for Fortune magazine. Yeah. And, or housing analyst, housing expert, whatever. And he left and started this company called Resi Club. Okay. So that's who runs this, Lance Lambert. Okay. It's his baby. It's his baby. He put out an article saying that the national home price growth this decade mm-hmm. has already surpassed that of the entire 1990s and 2010s. Oh, I believe it. Unpack that one, Nate Dog. Whoa. First off, Lance Lambert sounds like a supervillain name, which is it's pretty cool. It's a great cool. name, huh? Yeah, yeah. it's, a it nice does sound like it's like a strong name. It's like Lex Luthor. <laughs> <laughs> so U.S. home prices have risen by 47.1% in the first 50 months wow. this decade. 47.1%. <sighs> surpassing the entire appreciation of the 90s and 2010s. Kudos to anyone who bought a home before 2020. So My let me goodness. ask you guys a question. because So what do you think happens if, John, I, particularly John, because I've heard John has an interesting take on this. What do you think happens if the prices just keep going up at that rate? Is, does, do we just accommodate to that, or do you think the market's going to crash? 
I don't think the market's going you to crash. You don't think so? No chance. No. The market, the the rate of appreciation may slow. We may even see some depreciation at some point. But I truly believe that due to the lack of supply, mm -hmm. there simply isn't any scenario, in my opinion, why we could see a, a crash that people are so scarred by from the 2010, you know, 2007, 8, 9, 10 time frame. Yeah. For a few reasons. One is with the supply and demand issue that you're touching on. If you have multiple people looking at a house, odds are mm. they're not depreciating it. No. And as far as like a crash and foreclosures and all this, so many people have so much equity. Exactly. So they could just sell. If they had to, if they lost their job, heaven forbid. Right. If they fell upon hard times, health issues, whatever it may be. Now, I get rents are out of control, too. So, I mean, I'm not saying it's easy. But most people, if they had to, they can sell. And they, mm -hmm. they're sitting on a ton of equity. Whereas in the early part of my career, 2007, 8, 9, 10, I would go on listing appointments knowing that house was worth, you know, 60%, 70% of what they paid for it two, three years before that. Mm -hmm. I just don't see it happening because we're based upon the population numbers, based upon the number of units that are available, even just the, you know, housing starts are, are so far below where they need to be just to meet the demand of our population gains. Uh, so I just don't see it happening anytime soon. Um, you know, will prices ever go down? Yeah, they'll go down at some point. Mm -hmm. But if you look at this this article, if you're in it for the long haul, typically ten years plus, there's, there's no way you can. I, I want to say there's no way you can, but if if you hold a piece of real estate <laughs> for ten years or more, over the course of time, you've you've made money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's those short term losses where you can get bit in those scenarios like two thousand eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. But if you get the long term vision then uh, typically real estate has been a pretty safe investment. Mm -hmm. And very different scenarios. Mm -hmm. You know, 2008, today. Yes. Poor lending standards, supply and demand. Absolutely. Had some oversupply back then. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they said despite high mortgage rates around 7%, home prices increased by 6.4% nationally year over year from February 23 to February 24. And that ties into what we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. Supply and demand. Yes. For sure. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. It's supply and demand. Faux but, show. For cheesy money. Yes. All right. Um, price recovery. After a brief decline in national home prices in 2022, home prices have recovered in 2023 despite economic challenges. In some historical context, the 2020s have seen higher overall price inflation compared to the same period in the previous three decades. I believe it. It's been a hell of a decade so far. Previous decades growth, the 90s, 30%. The 2000s, is that the aughts? Is that what they call that? Or what is that? The, you never heard that before? The aughts, yeah. Yeah. Yep. John's out and left. He's got no <laughs> clue what's going on. It's more Four. of a British term, I think. Is aughts, it? yeah. But okay. yeah. Sorry, I'm not British. <laughs> <laughs> Could you talk more in that accent, please? <laughs> and the 2010s, 44.7%. Okay. Uh, you know, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. No, 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 no. Come on. Come on, man. <laughs> That's the end of our industry news for this podcast. Previous decades, the growth was plus 38.1% in the 90s, 47.3% in the 2000s, and 44.7% in the 2010s. For any of our listeners Good. of English Heritage, please feel free to list your homes with me because this guy is rude. And he's just obnoxious Ugh. all right you told me to do it more it's I very love posh it. i liked it yeah. let's have a little bit of a conclusion on this any final takeaways from this pod cheerio <laughs> <laughs> i love it i'm happy for you buddy congratulations i'm gonna let anything you say today slide because you just let us oh, know on that boy. fantastic news congratulations to you and jen i'm gonna Thank give you. this a podcast a 10.0 wow that was awesome love it <laughs> really that's my rating 10 out of 10, 10, out of 10. really you yep. too nate dog yeah 10 out of 10 baby wow 10 what's your 10? rating i guess i'll give it an eight <laughs> <laughs> I think there's always room for improvement. We were all over the place. Unbelievable. Ten. Normally, I feel like we have some good rankings, like real estate related stuff. We just didn't have it today. That was great. Perfect <laughs> podcast. Thank you all for listening. Until next time. Adios. Cheerio. Adios. That's a wrap on today's episode of Shooting the SHT. Be sure to subscribe wherever you heard this podcast so you never miss a future episode. And if you enjoyed this content, please share it with others and leave us a rating and a review. Buying, selling, or want to connect with Nick and JT? 
Visit Slocum Home Team on Facebook and Instagram or slocumhometeam.com. We'll see you next time.